Hello, my name is Rachel Jones, and I run an experimental craft blog called This Is Not a Craft.blogspot.com. And today, as you can see, I'm on the floor because my studio is, first of all, a huge mess, and I'm not cleaning it up for you. And second of all, because I'm using this ball, exercise ball, to make a really sweet lampshade. So let's get started. Okay, so here we go with materials. We got ourselves a cup, it's gonna be full of water, a brush, some wood glue, and some cheesecloth. Now don't be worried about um, what will happen when you put glue on a ball like this, because we're not gonna be covering the whole thing, and it should come right off after it's dry. I've done this a few times with several different things, because I'm, you know, weird like that. And what's great on exercise balls is that it has these little ridges and lines across so we know exactly how far I want to go. I want to go from the top to about the mid, a little bit below midsection. And that's going to be hung underneath a swag light. So I like to get the glue down first and then a layer of cheesecloth and then another layer of glue. All right, now we're ready to start, you know, draping the cheesecloth around. You can cut it into strips or you can do what I like to do where I just kind of lay it down and just keep on gluing. See my process? I just do it straight from the, the bottle and put it on. And you can do, I would do at least two layers of cheesecloth and let it dry overnight. Alright, this is a swag light that I will be using. Swag lights come in a kit called Swag Light Kit. You get it from the store. And you want to make sure that you buy this section right here with the copper outside. The stuff that just has like a plastic black outside is actually made to go within a standing lamp. If you want a hanging lamp, you need it to have that insulator on the outside which attaches it to this chain. Okay, so as you can see, our ball is almost done with that layer of cheesecloth and it should look a lot like a cast almost or like a mummy. And my glue went a little bit yellow, which is fine, because we're going to cover this with batting anyway. And I could go into more detail of what to look for when doing this, but just use your common sense. Make sure it's thick enough so that when it dries and we deflate this ball, this will continue to hold this shape. Really, that's what you need. There will be lines running through it, which are cool and organic. I like them, so keep them. So what I got here is some batting. And you can use whatever you want to cover this, let's be honest. But I like batting because you can see through it. You can stretch it out to be the size that you want it. It's relatively flat. I guess you could felt on top of this. But I tried that. It was a disaster. So um, do what makes you feel good, I guess. I'm going to cut this to the circle. I just got it on the ball because it's easier to do stuff on it when it's on the ball. Just follow the edge. So now I got it cut out, and there's a couple little like things on it. Just take it off. And uh, at the edge, it looks kind of squirrely right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it over, then sew it from the back. Just little tiny stitches, just little tiny ones. We don't want it to be all over the place, but we do want it to have a nice clean edge. Okay, so we got ourselves a tapestry needle. We're gonna roll over like this. Come from behind, poke down. Bloop. We're going to treat it like the edge of a blanket. I don't know if you've ever sewn the edge of a blanket, but it's a pretty easy stitch. I think it's called, it's not called a blanket stitch, it's called something though. Something official that I should know the name of, but I'm not really a fashion designer, so I don't know what it's called. And what you do is you go in from where you came. Pick up that stitch behind it. Pick up the edge. You'll be doing this for a while, sorry. Like that. Try to keep these somewhat even. They don't have to be super even though. I mean, it's at the very top. After all that sewing, you'll have yourself a nice little cloud. And I like it kind of cloudy on the edge. If you didn't like it cloudy, just take a trim and go over it with fabric again. 
but that's more work for me. This is already kind of a laborious project, so, you know. <laughs> now from here you can do a lot of cool things. You can do string across the top in a pattern, which could be cool. If you had dyed the batting, it would be colored. Now I'm going to do this really cool silhouette technique. So I went online and I found a really big picture of a bird. You could use whatever picture you wanted. Just make sure it's not too detailed. Birds, you can pretty much always tell what they are from far away and silhouetted because that's how usually we see them. After you've cut it out, it doesn't matter which side or how perfect. As you can see, I kind of fudged on some edges because I didn't want to put every leaf and feather in there. You set them out like this. And then when you hold it to the light, it will look pretty cool. So let's go see what that looks like. So that looks pretty awesome. I like it like that. As you can see, we got some streaks running through from the cheesecloth underneath. Kind of gives it a cool marble effect, almost kind of glassy, more like clouds. And these birds, they look pretty cool. We can't see like the little beaks. We can kind of see feet, but that's why we made it really big to catch as much as we could. This is the attachment that we're going to use on our swag light at least for me. If you don't have someone who can come by with her point torch and, you know, solder stuff together, there's other alternatives you can do as well. As you can see, this is just your typical washer, and it fits onto this part of a swag light. And if you, again, if you don't have a propane torch, just talk to your local, you know, Home Depot or Lowe's and ask what type of adhesive would be best for getting metal on metal. This is just copper-plated steel. You could also use a thinner wire that would wrap around the swag light, but I like to be kind of hardcore like this. Plus, I wanted to learn how to use propane torch, and now I know, but that will be another video. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attach this piece to this. I'm just using this little tiny attachment of the swag light to gauge about where the light bulb will sit within this dome. We don't want it to touch the edge. We don't want it to be too close to the edge because that's just a fire hazard. This isn't all that, you know, what do you call it, archival. I'm only really going to use a 40 watt bulb. A fluorescent bulb is also a lot cooler if you're really worried about that. But remember, there is insulators inside of this piece to keep it from, you know, short circuiting and setting on fire and stuff like that. I really don't think it will. So. We know that this is a good slope. These wires all have a slope down from the washer or from whatever you decide to use in the end to connect this. And so I'm going to kind of gauge where middle is or just by looking. And because this is really plastic, you don't have to be totally perfect. But I'm going to measure about how long this is from the edge. This says about eight and a half inches. And over here, it's roughly eight and a half as well. And as I'm measuring around, I'm seeing eight and a half is a real, real trend. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark eight and a half from the washer with a Sharpie on every single copper wire. So now that you've done that, can't see the mark really, but we're going to cut about an inch in front of the mark. The mark is just there to know where we can bend it later. We're going to bend these back on themselves and uh, that's how we'll know it'll make a perfect circle. Because okay, so now we go to where that little mark was. One clamp, and then with the other clamp. Make a loud noise, like, and turn it over. That was not elegant. I'll have to do another shot. Look at that! Woo! Oh, yeah. Really strong. Okay. All right, so we finished that part, and as you can see, it makes a cute little dome. This is this side. On the other side, it's what you're going to see when the lights are off. I think that's pretty cool, but if you're not down for that, remember, you can always change the color of the batting. If you get wool roving online, often it comes in lots of cool colors combined. You should look into that. I like batting, though, because it really sticks this cheesecloth, and it doesn't take a whole lot to put it on. If you're having issues with some of these, if one's like poking out a certain way, remember if you change the slope narrower, this will become longer on this end. If you make it steeper, then that will become shorter. You want to be a little bit longer than that. Assembled. It has a little light right here, but it also has a light in the cord, which is kind of sweet.
All right, so I'm just hanging it off my chandelier, but here's some shots of it in action. Nice little.